This week on Inside Oswego Speedway, we get started right away with qualifying heat races. And in small block super, heat number one, it was once again Jack Patrick working his way to the front of the field, diving to the inside of Jason Simmons down into corner number one to take the point out of that second corner. Patrick in the Longley Brothers Dodge car number nine would go on to get his fourth qualifying heat race win of the season in just five weeks at the Speedway ahead of Simmons and J.J. Andrews. Heat race number two, David LaTulip and Mark Castilia would start up there on row number one with podium finisher from one week ago, Camden Proud in the Step 1 Creative. Car number 54 riding there in position at number three, LaTulip would get the early edge in the number 27, but later on he would run into issues. The Nerf bar would start rubbing on the right rear tire of that car. He was forced to the pit lane, and that would put Castilia, Proud, and Harris out in front in qualifying heat race number two, and it would be Castilia in the number 69 machine driving on to victory. SBS qualifying heat number three, Barry Kingsley up there on the pole position, Danny Apt on the outside. And car number 57 would jump out into the early race lead with Steve Apt, John Tessorario, Mike Bruce, and Anthony Lacerdo battling back there further on. Kingsley, though, would get the edge down into corner number three. He would take the lead going into that third corner. And Kingsley now in the team tap out number 91 gets a little loose out of corner number four. Steve Apt able to follow him through. Apt in the 57 gets pushed to the high side as John Tessorario works his way by on the bottom. Mike Bond in the Mays Polynesian Motel, number 74, was on the move from the back of the field, first working under Tessorario in the 47, next diving to the outside of Steve Apt in the 67. Out of corner, number four, working across the stripe and now up into the runner-up position. And it wouldn't take long for Bond in that 74 machine to close in on the back bumper of Barry Kingsley, but he would run out of laps. Kingsley in the 91 would race on to his first qualifying heat race win of 2014. Novella's super modified qualifying heats would see Stephen Joy in the number nine and Jeff Abold in the 05, starting up there in row number one and qualifying heat number one, and it would be Keith Champagne in the Ocetic Racing, number 55, working the high side of the speedway to move up and into the runner-up position here in the early going as Dave Gruel and Joey Payne look for racing room further behind. A couple laps later, Gruel on the outside, able to dispose of both Champagne and Abold in one corner on the top side of the racetrack, Dave Gruel in the A&P Auto Parts, number 50, your new race leader out of corner number two. From that point on, Gruel would go on untouched to get the win in Novella Super Modified Heat Race number one in the 50. Over Champagne in the 55, Michael Barnes would work up to third in the 68 with Joey Payne in the number 99, rounding out the top four in this one as Jeff Abel and Jerry Curran battle across the stripe as well. Heat race number two, Brandon Ballinger in the 02, Sean Goslin in the number 26. Up there on row number one, and it was Goslin coming in from Chicago each week to race, taking that top spot down the back stretch and into corner number three is Pat Lavery in the double deuce looking for racing room. He would work around Bellinger into the runner up spot, chase down Goslin, but at the end of 12 laps, it was the Greensale House, car number 26 of Goslin grabbing the win over Lavery. Otto Sitterly in third, Brandon Bellinger would hang on for position number four. The third and final Novella Super Modified Qualifying Heat Race would see the two red machines of Brian Sweeney in the three and the zero hero, Timmy Snyder. Starting up there on the outside of row number one, Snyder would get the early edge with David Danzer in the 52 and Randy Ritzkis in the Lock Crane Services, car number 33, moving up into the front three spots. Snyder would run laps of 16-8 and go on to win his first qualifying heat race of 2014 in his brand new Hawk Jr. Fabrication chassis. Snyder on to victory lane. We'll be back with more right after this. Feature highlights from last week's action at Oswego Speedway. New York State's fastest action continues in the month of June. Oswego Speedway, home of the Super Modified. Saturday, June 21st, it's twin 35 features for the Novellis Super Modified. Presented by Burke's Do It Best Home Centers and Helena Chemical Company. It's the fastest field of Novellis Super Modifieds in history. Featuring wing sprint car veteran Jessica Zemke. For more information, visit online at OswegoSpeedway.com. Twin Super Modified features at Oswego Speedway. Saturday, June 21st, kids 16 and under free. The Pathfinder Bank Small Block Super Series would kick off the feature racing action last Saturday night presented by Century 21 Galloway Realty 
and the folks from OswegoCountyToday.com. And it was Barry Kingsley and Jason Simmons, the two team tap-out teammates starting from row number one. Simmons in the number 98 would pull out into the early race lead. He's had tough luck all season long, still looking for that first main event win of the season as some cars tangle back there in corner number three early on in this one. As the field would sort itself out, Craig Harris in the 1-4 racing number 04 machine was on the move early on. First working to the low side of the 67 of Steve Apt into corner number one. Next trying to make the move on the 47 of John Tessarario. Down and into corner number three. Apt eventually would work back on by Harris with series point leader Andrew Shartner. Next looking to try and make the move from back in row number six. Shartner in the Crow Motorsports number 18 was on the outside of the speedway all night long. First working around the 04 of Harris. Next sizing up the 67 of Steve App down the back straightaway. Check it out. Doesn't get much better than this. Shartner gets up to the outside, wheels that car on the top side of the speedway out of corner number four, and Shartner now moves his way up into position number 14, driving that number 18. Now trying to chase down the 69 of Mark Castilia. Kingsley would eventually close in on the 98 of Jason Simmons, but yellow lights would slow down that progress for Kingsley as they work down the front straightaway and into corner number one for a spinning number 73 of Alex Hogue. Hogue, who has had a tremendous season going up in the top 10 in the standings, working to the outside here out of corner number four, loses the handle on the 73 machine and goes around. That would bring out the caution lights and on the restart, Shartner would continue his charge through the field. Next working onto the outside of the 69 of Castilla into corner number three, making it stick out of that fourth corner to move up into position number three. Next trying to work on the 91 of Kingsley out of corner number two. Just two laps later, he would make it work. Once again on the outside into that third corner, it was nearly the same move every time, but Shartner has it down to perfection. Coming down the front straightaway and into that first corner, Shartner now into the runner-up spot with only Simmons left out in front in this one. The field now working down the front stretch into corner number one. Mike Bond working to the outside of the nine to Jack Patrick, trying to gain as many positions as he can as the 22 of Bruce. Spins down into corner number one and the 23 of Cameron Black comes in a day late, clocks the number 22 of Mike Bruce. Both cars would be done for the night. Cautions breed cautions, as they say, and later on, Steve Apt in the 69 of Castilla would tangle. Mike Bond comes flying in over the 04 of Craig Harris, goes over the 67 of Apt, ends up landing on the 69 of Castilla. As we get a slow motion look here at the replay, down into corner number three, as you see the 67 and the 69 come together, closing up the racetrack behind them, and then you'll see the 74 of Bond coming up and over the left rear of the 04 of Craig Harris, taking a hard shot to the pavement right there as Bond in the number 74 and Castilia in the number 69 would both be transferred to Upstate Medical Center for further observation. Both drivers are now home and resting, although it appears as though Mike Bond may be out for as many as four to eight weeks with a compression fracture to his back. On the restart, Andrew Shartner would try to do everything he could to work his way by the number 98 of Jason Simmons. Shartner looking for win number three on the season. Simmons trying to hang on for his second career victory. Shartner would try high, he would try low, but on the final lap, he wouldn't be able to make it work. Jason Simmons and the Team Tap Out Racing number 98 machine would go on to his first win of 2014 and his second career victory at Oswego Speedway. Shartner came home in second. Barry Kingsley held on for third ahead of Harris and Jack Patrick in the top five. Josh Kerr, Anthony Lacerdo, Cameron Rowe, Danny Apt, and Camden Proud would round out the top 10 finishers as Simmons brings the DNS Landscaping Nice Price Auto Sales number 98 machine to Turning Stone Resort Casino, Victory Lane. For the second time in his racing career as his teammate Andrews comes down for congratulations as well as Barry Kingsley. We benefited from a good starting spot because we've had such bad luck this year. Me, Barry, Jay, we've been struggling, but uh, I knew we'd have our night sooner or later, and uh, it worked out tonight. I'm just uh, so glad I can't thank the guys enough. Um, Pat Morrison with the motor, Ray Hedger with the chassis, David, Brian, Michael, all the guys in the garage. It's just been a crazy year, and we needed this. The 18 car in the cold weather, it's nocturnal, and it likes the cold, so it works really well. Uh, the outside groove was working phenomenally, 
and uh, you know it just it was working. That's the big thing. When it's working, it's working. You can do no wrong. Uh, that long caution at the end killed us. Uh, you know, I think I might have had some for Jason with the tires warm, but cold. It was just too slippery. I couldn't get the bite I needed. And uh, that was a heck of a job, though. Jason did exactly what he needed to do. Ran a heck of a race, and there's no one more deserving of this win than Jason. That's exactly the way it happened. Uh, the longer my car went, the better I got. I could just uh, uh, get into a better rhythm as a driver. Um, just the more I went, the better it got. I closed back in on him, and then just the rash of cautions, the rash of uh, restarts, I just couldn't get going. Car loosened up uh, halfway through and just uh, was got worse as uh, the race went on. Andrew Shartner continues to lead the way in the series standings now by 35 points over Jack Patrick. Mike Bond is in third, Craig Harrith in fourth, and Steve Apt rounds out the top five. New York State's fastest action continues in the month of June. Oswego Speedway, home of the Super Modified. Saturday, June 21st, it's twin 35 features for the Novellus Super Modified. Presented by Burke Stewart Best Home Centers and Helena Chemical Company. It's the fastest field of Novellus Super Modifieds in history. Featuring wing spray car veteran Jessica Zemke. For more information, visit online at OswegoSpeedway.com. Twin Super Modified features at Oswego Speedway. Saturday, June 21st, kids 16 and under free. 25 Novella Super Modifieds took the green flag on Saturday night for the Century 21 Galloway Realty Oswego County Today.com 50 lapper with Brandon Bellinger and Brian Sweeney bringing the field to green down into corner number one Sean Goslin in the number 26 and Keith Champagne in the 55 started back there a little bit further they got up to second and third right off the bat as Sweeney slips to the high side leaving the door open on the bottom for the 52 of David Danzer as well but Sweeney would find trouble the 37 of Ritzkis and the three of Sweeney get together as they both go up and tag the foam. Dave Gruel, Joe Gosick, Tim Devendorf involved as well. You should get a slow motion look here at the replay as Ritzkis tried to dive into the inside and the lock crane service is number 37. And that would block the racing lane up. Michael Muldoon, Lou LeVay, Dan Connors come sliding in there as well. We also had an in-car look at the incident from the zero of Timmy Snyder from the driver's perspective. And you can just see how fast everything happens as Snyder is able to work his way by in the zero machine. Later on after the restart, Michael Barnes started back in ninth, but you wouldn't know it. He got up to fourth position very quick in that Sorella Racing number 68. Next would go to the outside of the speedway to work on by the 55 of Champagne to move into third. And not long after that, Barnes would next shift to the inside of the speedway. This time working underneath the 26 of Goslin out of corner number four to snag the runner up spot. Barnes in just his third feature behind the wheel of the Sorrell Racing number 68 now into second. Yellow lights would wave one more time for a spinning Keith Champagne out of corner number two. You could see the front wing knocked off of that car in the incident. Champagne would come back on the track momentarily, but would later on drop out of the event. On the restart on lap number nine, Barnes would again work to the inside out of corner number four, disposing of the 0-2 of Bellinger, taking over the race lead. With Barnes running away out in the lead, Otto Sitterly in the GNI Homes car number seven began to work his way through the field. First to the outside of the 26 of Sean Goslin, next working on the 0-2 of Brandon Bellinger. And as you can see, Barnes had totally checked out from the field, nearly over a full straightaway advantage. So Sitterly knew the time was now as he works to the 0-2 of Bellinger out of corner number four to move up into second as Dave Gruel in the number 50 machine looking for racing room as well. After a caution later on, Sitterly was able to close the gap just a little bit, but Barnes proving to be too good in the open track as Dave Gruel further on back works to the outside of Bellinger, now up into position number three in the u pull u -Save Auto Parts, car number 50. The battle for fourth on back was certainly interesting with Bellinger, Goslin, Lavery, Payne in the 99, the 52 of Danzer, and the 21 of Cody Graham, all going at it down into corner number one. Eventually, Goslin was able to clear Bellinger. Lavery and Payne trying to find racing room as well down into that third corner. Payne trying to work to the inside of the 22 of Lavery, unable to make it stick. That gives the high lane to Lavery now out of corner number four. And Pat Lavery finally able to make the move on Bellinger to get on by. Payne would follow suit as well. Back out in front, though, it was all Michael Barnes all night long in that number 68 machine working on to his sixth career Oswego Speedway victory and his first for Sorrell Racing. Sitterly came home in second, Gruel in third, Lavery and Payne would round out the top five. 
Cody Graham in sixth, David Danzer in seventh, Sean Goslin with his first top 10 finish of the season in eighth, Brandon Bellinger in ninth, and Danny Connors Jr. would round out the top 10 in that new John Coloca built super modified chassis as Michael Barnes climbs out from the roll cage, gets the high five from car owner Eric Sorrell in turning Stone Resort Casino victory lane. Now, uh, you know, we had to start a little far back there and uh, I just kind of, I got really lucky on the start there. The holes opened up and made a couple of good moves and, uh, you know, got some spacing from Otto and David and them and, uh, you know, that was kind of key. Try to keep them behind us because they're real fast. And yeah, I just, I can't thank these guys enough. Sorrell's for having me, Joey Hawksby, I mean, it just incredible, incredible car. Um, you know, we kind of took a little gamble, on, you know, for a setup on the feature. I think it was the right way to go. The car was just phenomenal, 50 laps. So, you know, I got to thank my sponsors, Gaffney's Long Care, Hawk, Chassis, obviously, Doug Holmes, Finger Lakes Machine, Scribe Town in. And uh, just all these guys, I just can't thank them enough for having me drive this car. Oh, there's a lot of fast cars here, Danny. You know, um, so many equal cars, but, uh, you know, with consistent finishes, you got to start back there. And, we just sort of take it, you know, it's, it is what it is. Barnsley was really fast tonight. He was better in traffic, and we just uh, we just couldn't maneuver like we'd like to, so we're still working on ours. Uh, it wasn't bad. Um, I think we could have improved if we uh, had a straight front end and a good rear wing on it, but it seems like every week we got some type of uh, uh, something going on, but we still come out of it, and uh, just the whole team comes together, and uh, another good night, top three finish, you know. Kind of a wrecked race car. Uh, it got some damage there, but still came out of it, drove through the pack. You know, went backwards on the start a little bit, and as soon as everything got filed out, we were able to get uh, right back in line, get going, and march towards the front. So luckily, uh, sitting up here talking to you. The Super Modified Championship now shows Otto Sinnerly with a 58-point edge on Dave Gruel. Pat Lavery now up into position number three.